Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we found the transfer function of this particular circuit. This is the result that we got, and we can also write it as such. Now, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to graph that transfer function. Now, we realize that we found two zeros, one at s equals negative 2 and one at s equals negative 3. So we indicated those on the graph, and then we found the two poles, one at about minus 1.5 and one about minus 6.5, so we put the poles there as well. Now, what does the graph look like? Well, what we need to do is evaluate some of the other points. For example, we might want to evaluate it at 0.5, at 1, at 2.5, and then somewhere like maybe 5, 6, 7, and 8 to see what that curve looks like. Now notice, since we have the relationship between s and omega like this, s equals j omega, then we realize when s is equal to negative 2, and we plug that in here and set equal to j omega, for one of the zeros, we get omega equals to 2j. And so one of the ways to evaluate it is to plug that 2j into our equation here for omega, and then see what h becomes. If we do that for omega equals 2j, you will indeed get a zero. But of course, we already knew that. We don't need to do that. So what we can do is we can find values when we substitute other things, such as omega equals j, omega equals j 0.5, j 2.5 for the point between the two zeros, and so forth. And let's see what we get. First of all, if we let omega equals j, and then, of course, we replace every omega by j. We get j squared here. We get j squared there. We get j squared, and of course, we have to square that. And we get j squared over here. If we then evaluate that, we get 10 times 1 times 2, because, of course, j squared is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2, and so forth. We get 6.67 when omega equals j, or 1 right here. So 6.67, uh, let's put it right about there. Well, what about when omega is j 0.5? Well, when we do the same calculation, we get it as 6. So we can see that the curve here looks kind of like this, and then asymptotically reaches the pole. What if we plug in 2.5? When we plug in 2.5, we get 0.667, which is just a little bit above the zero point. And since these are zeros, we can then assume that the curve goes like this, and the curve continues asymptotically like that towards the pole. What about the other side? Well, when we plug in, uh, let's see here, j5, we get negative 12. And so uh, we get something like this. And then when j, when we get plug in j6, we get negative 60. So we can see that the curve will then go this way asymptotically to the pole. What about on the other side of the pole? Well, for J7, we get a positive 67. For J8, we get a positive 30. So at 7, we get a very big positive value. 8 would go like this. And so we can see that then the curve goes this way, asymptotically reaches the pole this way. So that gives us a pretty good idea of how to graph the transfer function simply by plugging in values for omega. And that is how it's done.